Good morning students, my name is Pradeep Sharma, your social science teacher for this academic session from Little Angels High School, Gwalia. I hope you all are doing well and learning through our videos. As you know that we have already discussed two chapters, chapter number one and chapter number nine from your book. And today we are going to discuss chapter number 10, Forests and Wildlife. I hope this video will help you to understand this chapter. So let's start lesson 10 forests and wildlife. Before we proceed let's discuss these two terms forests and wildlife. The first one is forests. Forests are defined as large areas of land with trees. They are the natural habitat of large scale wildlife, growth of trees, shrubs and different variety of plants which unfortunately are diminishing every year. Hence, conservation of forest is an important responsibility that all of us have to undertake. Forests provide many resources such as food, medicine, fabric and raw materials. Then we have wildlife. Wildlife refers to the animal species that are not domesticated. So any living organism that lives in the forest region are associated with wildlife. It is found in almost all ecosystems such as rainforests, boreal forests, plains, grasslands, deserts, etc. Wildlife provides great stability to our environment wherein they are involved in natural processes either directly or indirectly. In this chapter, we will study about how forests are useful to us the different types of forests found in our country, the Chipka movement and Van Mahotsav. We will also discuss about what wildlife sanctuaries are. And in the end, we will talk about some famous national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. So first, let's talk about importance of forests. We get timber, firewood, pulp, lac, resins, gum, herbs, grasses and leaves from the forests. Timber is used in building houses, tools, furniture and railway slippers. Paper, which is used in our day-to-day -day life for different purposes. It is made from wood pulp. Roots of trees hold soil in its place. The trees give us oxygen. Forests keep the air fresh and cool. Forests provide shelter to the wildlife animals and they also help in causing rainfall. So forests are really, really important for all of us. Now let's discuss the types of forests. The first one is evergreen forests. Then we have deciduous forests, thorny forests, tidal forests and coniferous forests. So first of all, we'll talk about evergreen forests. These kinds of forests remain green throughout the year. The trees in these forests never shed their leaves fully. They are the, these forests are found in the hot and wet regions of our country. The slopes of the western Ghats and the hills of northeastern India are full of evergreen forests. The trees in these forests are tall and form a canopy as they have a very thick growth. In these forests, we can see the trees like ebony, mahogany, and rosewood. The next type of forest is deciduous forest. The trees in these forests shed their leaves in summer season. The main trees found in these forests are sal, shisham, and teak. You can see the picture of these trees on this slide. Wood of these trees is useful for making furniture and as building material. And these forests are found in southern plateaus and along the foothill of the Himalayas. Then we have thorny forests. Trees in these forests have thorns and long roots. Common trees of thorny forests are babul, cactus and kikar. These trees can live without water for a long time. And these forests are found in Rajasthan and parts of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. The next type of forest 
tidal forests. These forests are found in the deltas of the Ganga, Mahanadi and Godavari river, rivers. A tree called Sundari or mangrove is found in the Ganga delta. This area is called the Sundarbans. And then we have coniferous forests. Trees in these forests are tall and pointed and have needle shaped leaves. Trees in these forests bear cones. These forests are found in higher Himalayan mountains and parts of Nilgiri hills. Cheer, Deodar, Fir and Spruce are the common trees found in these forests. From these forests, we get resin and turpentine oil from for different purposes. Now let's talk about Chipko movement. In 1974, the villagers in the hills of Uttarakhand thought of a unique way to prevent the cutting of trees. Do you know what they did? They put their arms around the trees. When the tree cutters came, they told them they would not leave the trees till the tree cutters left. This was called the Chipko movement. There were many people who participated and contributed in this movement, but the main leaders of those, this movement were Sundarlal Bahuguna, Chandi Prasad Bhatt, and Gauri Devi. And you can see the pictures of these three people or the leaders on this slide. Then we have Man Van Mahotsav. Van Mahotsav is celebrated every year in the rainy season. Children are encouraged to plant a tree and social forestry movements aim at planting more trees. So it's a celebration of forests, you can say, because one means forest and Mahotsav means celebration. So when we celebrate forests, we call it Van Mahotsav. Now let's talk about wildlife sanctuaries. These sanctuaries and parks actually preserve wildlife. Government has taken steps and set up wildlife sanctuaries and national parks to protect the birds and animals from hunters. Wildlife is protected and natural vegetation is conserved in the wildlife sanctuaries and national parks. And tourists from all over the world visit these sanctuaries and parks. You can see the pictures here. The first one is of Kaziranga National Park. It's a World Heritage Site. And the second one is of Manas Wildlife Sanctuary. So here on this slide, we can find out some national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in India. The Kaziranga National Park and Manas Sanctuary in the northeast of India are famous for elephants, rhinos, tigers and deer. The Sundarbans in West Bengal are the homes of famous Bengal tiger. The Asiatic lions live in the Gir forest of Gujarat. And the tiger is protected in national parks like Ranthambur and Corbett. So before uh, we finish, uh, let's review what we discussed. We discussed about different types of forests. We have evergreen forest, deciduous forest, thorny forest, tidal forest, and coniferous forest. We also discussed about Chipka movement. We discussed about Van Mahotsav and how the trees are helpful for us. I'm going to upload the video and along with this video, you will also find the notes for this chapter. I hope you will watch this video carefully and learn from it. Thank you.